forever. Dog. Cool is the rule when you're on a case and danger's in your face. This week on the podcast, Franklin W. Dixon's Hardy Boys, number 73, Bad Rap. Welcome to Teen Creeps, the podcast that discusses why Pulp Fiction. I'm one of your hosts, Lindsay Katai. And I'm another one of your hosts, Kelly Nugent. And we are joined today by writer, director, you may know him from Children's Hospital, Bajillion Dollar Properties, or his work at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in Los Angeles. It's Alex Fernie. Hello. Hi. And you're our uh, Hardy Boys correspondent. That's right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And again, I, I want to stress, it's not just Hardy Boys, number 73, Bad Rap. It's Hardy Boys, Case, case Files, files. So number 73. It's right. you you know, it's, it's a, it, it was a reboot, bitch. of course. Yes. Uh, it's <laughs> this extremely is a green, important. dark daft yes. cow. I know. Before the Case Files, it was fun. And then the Case Files yeah. started. And, and then it was not dark. fun. No. Yeah. Very serious. And it was boring. It was stunningly oh boring. Oh, my God. It this was boring. is a very boring book. I was not prepared for how boring this would be compared to the first book we did, which was Dead on Target. It where yes. almost every chapter somebody dies. Yeah. yeah, it was a thrill ride. I mean, someone and, dies on the cover. But mm-hmm. I was also bored at the same time. Yes. yes. Well, because it was too much, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you're deadened yeah. to it. I'm deadened on target. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of where we bring you here on Team Creeps. Um, I, what I was going to say is this book is very, very boring to read. I did not enjoy reading this no. book. It brought me no joy. But then I'm... So I go downstairs, and there were some people over at our apartment, and I was telling them how boring the book was, but then I was relating details, and then I had to reassure them, like, no, 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 contrary to how this sounds when I am telling you right now, it was very boring to read, because when I say the details, it sounds really fun and funny and stupid, but no, very boring. I just realized I forgot my notebook in the other room. I'm going to get it because I took a lot of little notes. Oh, good. Okay. Please do. Back. We'll make small talk. Great. So how about these clowns in Washington? Oh, huh? boy. You know what? Throw boy. the bums out. Yeah. That's what I Three say. Three in that swamp. Yeah, absolutely. I just want somebody to adhere to a moderate center. Yeah, just like, you know what? Can't we, need we more, be let's civil? Let's get some centrists in let's here. Get some That's what, damn civility back Just in, like there used to be. In back the, in our, you know what I'm for? Family. Yeah, very much so. Mm-hmm. Oh, and she's back. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I had to get my little notes that I scribbled in my little notebook. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, so there was an, an issue that I had. I mean, I had a lot of issues with this book. Did you? A, it's very embarrassing. Yes. For yes. everybody involved. That, I, I think, yeah, one, boring. Two, embarrassing. When embarrassing. you say for everybody Close involved, second. you mean Joe and Frank Hardy? Is that who you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are written by, it's written I mean, by Joe and Frank and Hardy. And us. Yeah, yeah, and, and us. Mm-hmm. I mean, by proxy. Yeah. Um, but I had also, uh, I have literally just finished listening to uh, last podcast on the left's coverage of the Tupac and Biggie uh, feud <laughs> and then got That's into this. Funny. And I was like, man. <laughs> funny coincidence of. Uh, I mean, exactly the same. Yeah, that's why I say funny coincidence mm-hmm. is because it's just as like heartbreaking and yeah. uh, interesting yeah. and I will say this, convoluted. The cover of this book is exceptionally good. Very good. That's why we're talking about it because someone tweeted it at you guys, right? Yeah, a listener suggested that we read this and they were right to suggest that. I mean, the cover... Definitely right. It shows uh, uh, the Hardy brothers holding back teams of... uh, uh, Screaming women. Throngs of women. Screaming white... Early '90s hip hop fans and one guy doing the Black Power salute. I just noticed a white oh guy. Oh my god! I just oh. noticed that. Uh, well, another dude raps in front of a drummer, Ooh. and you go like, "Well, that's yeah. what this is going to be about." It was. I mean, yeah. I, I do love. And it's not. You get what it's about, right? Because you know, rappers have. It's just a rapper and a drummer on yeah. stage. It's actually yeah. that's usually what it. Kind of interesting. I would at least give it a listen. As default, if you say rapper, I um, I automatically picture a white man. Yeah, a white dude because yes. that they they rule mm-hmm. they rule the school. Yeah. when it comes to rap. Yeah, and then what happens on the cover doesn't happen until I think like the third to last page and for an, two lines. Yeah, it's in off, a way no one yes. cares about it. No, it's They're, just like oh, and by the way, this happens. It makes it look as as our engineer. Janar said, it looks like they're his bodyguards. I, that's, I went into yeah. it assuming. It like I thought they would go undercover as his bodyguards. Such a and good pitch. No, 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 no. They're investigating a bootlegging case because mm-hmm. like, oh, bootleg copies of his album are being sold in Chinatown. Also, Whoa. okay, speaking on that, I wrote, 
in my notes, TLDR, <laughs> Asians oh, are shady. Yes. That is what this book was. It was literally, and it was, okay, let's just break it down. Uh, first, they're like in Chinatown. Yeah. They are getting these bootleg copies of Randy Rand's album. <laughs> also, oh, yeah, oh God, name. we should say. Randy Rand. His name is Randy Rand. His group... group? Is the Power Brokers mm -hmm. Randy Rand and the Power Brokers instead of Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, yep. which I will say better name. Yes, Power Brokers. It, it just sounds more serious, cooler, yeah, harder hitting Older. name than Funky Bunch. Yeah, which when I say that alone, I want to say it forever. Yeah. yeah, Funky Bunch. Funky Bunch. Then they. It sounds like a mom's rap group. It <laughs> does. I I my eight year old son <laughs> expressed an interest in hip hop. And uh, so he and his friends got together and they called themselves the Funky Bunch. It sounds like a mom, like a group of moms um, uh, from the Midwest uh, at a trivia night. Like that's their trivia name yeah. is Funky Bunch. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, you know. Maybe the huge yeah, yeah. purses. Just the huge, biggest purses. Huge and they're all yeah. Jenny and Burke. Mm -hmm. But they always lose. <laughs> they always yeah. lose. They're but they're having fun. It they're having it fun. Matter. It doesn't. They're, they're getting out of the house. Fun. Yeah. Um, secondly, they meet a child who is bootlegging these, yes. who has the last name Wynn. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, oh, Vietnamese. Oh, Vietnamese. Okay, Vietnamese. interesting. Then, no. Incorrect. Chinese. Chang is from Hong Kong. So then you're like, okay. And then incorrect. Chang's Italian. bodyguards <laughs> are ninjas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then the, the real counterfeiter, as they call yeah. it, is Italian. Martinelli. Yeah, Martinelli. <laughs> Of the Apple Juice franchise. Yes. yes. I mean, he, Black Sheep. Yeah. It totally. really he, does. He went to a less respectable <laughs> business. Mm. I mean, sparkling apple cider, we can all agree, is great. I oh, mean, it's, it's a corrupt Leggings, business. A white but... man's rap albums. Yeah. Less great. The, 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 I guess the Hong Kong gangster, Blue Lu Chang, was that his name? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which the whole book I was reading, I was like, okay. <laughs> And like it was just like okay. I know it's coming. I yeah. know something. Yeah. Like they're, they're they're walking the line of where they could argue now. Okay, but this is wrong. And and then they're like, I don't know. Maybe he's just a guy. oh four ninjas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like out yeah. of the blue. Oh, it's the just end, a businessman like, uh, with with uh, nunchucks and broadswords. Yeah, yeah. Also, as one does as mm -hmm. a Chinese uh, bootlegger. Yeah, in, Chinese bootlegger. In New York's Chinatown. And yeah. no, one, no one bats an eye. Everyone's like, mm, I guess, I guess mm. so. That's like, ninjas. Oh, it's ninjas. real problem in Chinatown, all these ninjas. Yeah, because they leave. They keep leaving calling cards to do with a blue snake, yeah. which is very funny. These are the most low-rent mobsters in the fucking world. Oh, my God. Their calling card is a garter snake painted blue. Yeah. I was like... And then a knife with the blue with snake the blue on it. snake. In a pillow. In a pillow. In a pillow. Even the characters in the book are like... Oh, it's just a painted blue snake. Yeah, yeah. If someone gave me a painted blue snake, it would almost scare me more than a poison snake because I was like, that's a psychopath. Animal abuse. Yeah, and like, why would you I do like, that? Yeah, like, you're why? really saying something yeah. right now. Because that took time. You didn't just yeah, find didn't a blue just snake. throw a snake and in a it's a book. Plate. Have it be a poisonous yeah. snake. Sure. Paint a cobra blue yeah. and be yeah. like, oh no, and then they have to kill the snake. Sure. Um, do you want to read the back of the book? Okay. Even though I feel like we're doing a very good job giving a breakdown. Yeah. A killer sound. Somebody's ripping off rap artist Randy Rand by counterfeiting copies of his hottest tunes and cutting in on his profits. For Frank and Joe, the case is a piece of cake. The trail leads right to a hustler named Jack Martinelli, and the Hardys catch the con man in the act. But the act turns downright dirty when Martinelli turns up dead. Suddenly, I hate this line. <laughs> so funny. Rapster Randy faces a murder rap. I don't know uh... if I ever noticed the word rapster. Yeah, I I don't think they say it in the book. I think yeah. I I read the back of the book so long ago. Yeah, that... I, I think I missed that. And the Hardy Boys face deadly danger on the mean streets of New York. New York. <laughs> <laughs> They're convinced the real killer is running free, and it's up to them to do their stuff, no matter how rough it gets. Because if they don't find the dude who did the deed, Cool Man Randy <laughs> Rand will soon be cooling his heels in jail. This is a crime. Cool Man Randy <laughs> Rand. Cool. Cool. He is the um, nicest guy in any book I've ever oh, read. Oh, so nice. Randy so Rand nice. is a fucking sweet guy. Actually, I gotta say, Beastmaster J probably nicer. <gasps> yeah, Beastmaster like, J. The rappers in this mm -hmm. are like just sweet as pie. Yeah, and when they get oh mad, gosh, they feel bad about it, and they're like, yeah. oh, "I really flew off the handle." And you're like, "Oh, 
Um, yeah, I, you know what? This is book is racist in a way I didn't expect. I, I thought I knew in what way this book was going to be racist. Oh, yeah, but, but it no. was different. And it was absolutely not. Racist against Chinese people, mm-hmm. not yeah. black people. And it, yeah. Well, it gets a little bit in early in when they're introducing the power brokers, and it describes Randy Rand, uh-huh, and it yeah. describes the other another power broker. And you're like, okay, true, maybe this may be racist. And then the third guy, they're like, a black man. Like, yeah. Like, they're just kind of like, oh, mm-hmm. oh, all right. And then they, like, lose interest. Yeah, and then they're just like, off he goes. Yeah. yeah. I I will say it. it was... There was a moment, and this is being generous. Let's say I'm reading this very generously. Okay. Because this certainly isn't, I, I don't think this is what they were going for. But let's pretend that I'm tweaking it up to 10. Okay. Sure. Joe and Frank Hardy really had to be confronted with their ideas of how a black rapper would behave because mm-hmm. they assumed Beastmaster they Jay did. was going to be very aggressive mm-hmm. and violent. And Randy Rand had to put him in their place. Yeah. No, he's a very gentle soul. Yeah. He's just, he's just, they just have a, a simple rap beef. They, they do. Have a beef. They even have like a diss track that doesn't get really oh referenced very much. It's so embarrassing. Um, the diss track is so embarrassing. I don't what remember the lines of the diss track. Oh, I, I don't think we even. Oh, I'm not sure what, they are. I, 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 what I have was the very fun about yeah, the, the final and the first. So both Kelly and I had to borrow Fernie's book yeah. because uh, ours you know what? I weren't planned that around the time. I hopped on. I'm usually Amazon. so good about this. I yeah. can't remember the last time. But oh, like I said, I the reason I kind of slept on it is because when I went on Amazon, it was like oh, I can order it and it's Prime shipping. That's what I thought. and I was like oh, I'm safe. And then when I went back, so I like to say that our listeners really fucked us over on this because yeah. I know that you're the ones who bought it because otherwise, who is buying this book? Yeah. There so, were nine copies and none of you, you bought it. <laughs> and also, uh, sorry, a, a sincere apology to each and every one of you that spent $12 or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's true. Hopefully it was only like six or seven at the time. Um, so we all borrowed your book mm-hmm. and got the honor of seeing your, your I started marks. underlining it. Yeah, yeah because I was, I was like, there are so, I, 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 very, I stopped very fast because I was like, <laughs> yeah, every line is bad. You had like three underlines. And then I was like, what am I and doing? And then it's just dog yeah. But I did enjoy but I was seeing very, what you thought was yes. noteworthy. Yeah, well, it was fun because it was usually the same. The first thing yeah, I was going to do that I was going to track was like, I want to see what this version of Franklin W. Dixon's version of 1992 New York is because I don't think they live in 1992 New York. <laughs> no. And so just watching them navigate New York City was like, and they get in a cab and they go here. Like they <laughs> no understanding like, yeah. of what this is, how big Chinatown is, how Spatially, big Manhattan yeah. is. I <laughs> was losing my mind every time the ghostwriter felt the need to tell us what their meal was, where they had oh. the meal, oh yeah, and how they got from one place to another. Mm-hmm. This, I was like, I don't need to know that they went. They are getting paid by the word one hundred percent. Seriously, yeah. they went by taxi. They went by subway. Yeah. Next thing they knew, they were in the subway. Let me see if I can find my favorite completely unnecessary part. My fa- I think my favorite word in it is then when they first meet Randy Rand. Uh, he's describing himself, uh, oh, and yep. he says, "Well, check this. I'm a poor kid from Brooklyn." All right. Who hooks up with the <laughs> baddest jammies in the world? Jammies. Oh my God. What does right. jammies mean? I don't know what jammies is. And it ends with with the baddest jammies in the world, comma, right period. Not even right question mark. Just right. I don't right. know what that means. Right. There were a couple of things they said baddest that I did not. Jammies in the world. Right. 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 There were a couple of things I did period. not understand what they were saying. Declarative no. statement. Like when um, I the think it was. use of deaf. Yeah. Deaf as a compliment. That's not what that is used for you don't it, say wow you're like yes Def Jam records I think the reference but not, I, I think it's whoa they're just outdated because I think that's more like you're you like know, the deafest they use like, it always just what? wrong yeah, yeah. It's always just, just, just wrong. like just to the left well and also like I didn't really get this either so he introduces Tony and Dr. D who are the other power brokers mm-hmm. and Frank in response to the phrase that's Tony and Dr. D. He says they're fresh. Mm-hmm. Tony and Dr. D are fresh. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Randy knows. They're all fresh. <laughs> Dude, so, so, <laughs> Who okay. Isn't fresh so, in this book? so Frank says that and Randy's just like, I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Randy's just like, mm, you're from Connecticut. You know what? That's I'm fine. not going to add to this. <laughs> uh, so the prime example mm. of the unnecessary details on either where they're eating or where they're going or their specific movements. And I kept like when I would get really bored, I would try to translate the page in my mind to what 
might how it might be playing out or written if it was a good noir. Mm. Yeah. I started doing that too. I mean, yeah. like, okay, I like, like okay, there's something cause fun about starting with a low stakes. It's yes. just someone ripping off CDs and then this that ends like up Chinatown. in murder. Yeah, that's, I, I would yeah. think yeah. that. Yeah, like, oh, it's, it's deeper than it looks. Yeah. It's yeah, everywhere. Classic. And classic like, noir. Tabitha's the dame. Yeah. yeah. And so I was trying, I was just like trying to convert it in my mind. And I was like, I think maybe the main difference is, I mean, besides the obvious, which is tone, um, more movement description and, <laughs> and meal description than character tone and description mm -hmm. it was just like here's who they were here's what they were wearing yeah that was it we don't know what it they feel about anything there wasn't any kind of palpable yeah we don't know how they like all we know is they like oh that dude's bad that mm -hmm. dude's good oh i thought that dude was bad turns out he's good yeah. that was about as deep as it got in mm -hmm. terms of like impressions of people whereas noir is so thick with impressions mm -hmm. of people or or the other thing that jumped out at me is like, you don't go right to the fucking warehouse. Yeah. You no, look up who so owns the dumb. building. You look up some paper trail. You fucking assholes. You don't like find out. You don't go to Chinatown. Mm -mm. Maybe go to Chinatown. Or I'll you, grant you that. Yeah. But you, you go to ask, Chinatown. You just ask around. You yeah. don't go you into the fucking warehouse. I'll, I'll grant you like up until when they meet the kid who's selling the actual bootlegs. When? Mm -hmm. When? And and he says, oh, it's this guy. This guy is where I get it. This guy's who I work for. Great. Now go do some fucking background. Yeah. Do some. Um, Just like recon. Yes, something. recon you don't have to on go the in. guy. You don't go directly. To, what are you going to. What's your game plan once you get there? The Hardy you Boys are not good at this. Stupid little boys. No. They're just oh, stupid little boys wandering around New York. But the other fun thing is either you try to like convert it in your head to noir or you imagine them as 10 year olds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's pretty fun. Imagine them as it's 10 year olds. It's fun when you are like 10 year olds are doing that. I yeah. also think like the, so they go and they, they meet this kid. who's like, who never really factors in. He's like, yeah, go talk to this guy. Yeah. And after I'd finished the book, I was like, you're going to save these ninjas for like the last 10. If you're going to do ninjas in Chinatown, just yeah. do it then. Like yeah. just right away they get attacked. You know, like yeah. instead yeah. this book is straight. It's 150 very small pages and the first 50 of it, nothing. It's just a sincere who's making duplicates of yeah. CDs. Yeah. And yeah. Then on page 50, someone dies. Martinelli dies. And until then it's just sort of like, yeah, mm. I guess that's how you'd look into it. I, I don't, yeah. I don't know. There's not even a glimmer of excitement. No, no. They and it's impossible to care about records. Too. Mm. At all. They just go places and see people. Yeah. yeah. So here's here's the page where I was like, enough. Enough. <laughs> Besides, I doubt he'd kill Martinelli just to frame Randy. This is toward the end of the book, by the way. He doesn't seem capable of it. Okay. So they've just talked to Beastmaster Jay right. and determined that he is a gentle soul. I guess you're right, Joe said, automatically pressing the button for the elevator. When he remembered it was broken, he held the door to the stairs open for Frank. What about Blue Lou? I'm becoming more and more convinced of his guilt. Frank and Joe headed down the stairs. I guess we should head back. We promised we'd meet Randy for lunch, Frank said. We have to go back to the hotel anyway, Joe said. I forgot my wallet. So I guess the cab ride is on me again, Frank said jokingly. I'll take care of lunch, Joe offered, after I get my wallet. Within 15 minutes, the Hardys were back at the Gramercy, heading for their room. Frank opened the door and stood waiting while Joe picked his wallet up and shoved it in his back pocket. Okay, mm -hmm. we're ready, Joe announced. Okay. It no, yeah. That's not a detail that's no. necessary. No. I don't. It never comes into play that he forgot his wallet. It never comes into play that they went back to the hotel room to get his wallet. It's it's literally just stupid. words on a page. Yeah, it has to be by word yeah. or by page. That has to be by their page. <gasps> you guys. What? I was wrong. What? It totally comes into play that he forgot his wallet because that's when they discovered the tape recorder. In the room. However, mm. did not need to know the elevator no. was broken. No. Did not need to know that they forgot, pushed the button for the elevator. Yeah. Did not need to know that they took the stairs. Did not need to know that midway down the stairs they remembered something else and went back up the stairs. Yeah. Yep. However, I will grant that the wallet came into play. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the Hardy boys are just so bad at what they do and they're teenagers. So really there's no reason why anyone has any business calling the Hardy boys to 
do anything. No. No. And yet- To be fair, if you're following along with the Hardy Boys case files, I think at this point, book 73, they have like stopped multiple international drug okay. smuggling rings. So maybe oh, okay. you've heard that and you're like, you know yeah, what? This yeah. seems small stakes, but let's call those guys in. Makes a little more sense. They've yeah. been around tons of people dying. This yeah. won't shake. Maybe they thought this would be this would be easy for them. Give them a little vacation. Sure. Give them a break. Yeah. I mean, and it was funny because they were like, well, the police won't help with this case. But yet when the Hardy Boys arrive, a police officer helps immediately. them instantly immediately. with the case. So I was just like, there's and no reason for these not boys just to that, be here. but they had the same leads. Yeah. Oh, exactly the same. Mm-hmm. So, and they were appropriately what, then? they to a fully appropriate level didn't care about the duplications. Yeah, like they oh, were, they were yeah. like, yeah, I mean, we'll get around to it. I don't know. And then people start dying. They're like, it, you, you could read from the cops like this is a stupid, this is dumb. Yeah, like yeah. We, okay, Hardy boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 you yeah, figure they, it out. And even. I respected how much they were staying on top of it. Yeah. The police. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, you guys have actually been keeping up with this case to an appropriate degree. Yeah. There is one scene in this book, and I was just trying to find it, and I can't, so I'll paraphrase it, uh, that almost accidentally achieves actual good, like, pulp book from, like, the 40s. Mm -hmm. And it's a scene where Frank and Joe either go into Randy Rand's hotel room or he comes into theirs. And if you read it with a subtext that they're about to fuck, it <laughs> yes. a home run. Because it really feels like one of those old pulps where it's like, we can't say it and we can't show yeah. it. But it's just got this tension where like Randy Rand is pissed off and they're kind of trying to calm him down. And uh-huh. because it's just so factual of like, he sits on the bed. He did, like, it's all these things. Right, you're like, and he's shirtless. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. Like, it's really leading towards like, hey, Randy Rand's gonna fuck these teens. Yeah, uh, and yeah. Like that, and these teens I, are gonna fuck and, Randy. And I mean, it's gonna be great, and it's gonna cut till I right mean, after. I mean, Joe's been wanting to do it from yes, page one. Absolutely. There's and even a part where one of them's like, "I have to admit, he's hot." Yeah, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah yes. I know. We all know." Absolutely, and it's so much like it's so yeah, accidental. He's fucking Mark yeah. Wahlberg. I know. Everybody Dancing wants to around. fuck Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, he's Dirk Diggler. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. It. Yeah, I mean, this book. Uh, there were actually multiple parts where. He was described in a very yeah. sexual way. Yeah, he is. Or just like certain details is, that I was like, we don't. Well, he's described more sensually than Tabitha. Sensually, oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. And part of it, I think, was because he's like nice. Like, again, like. He's nice. He's he is nice never. Dude. He's like gets angry at one point uh, and not at the boy. Every time he's like, yeah, I'm really sorry. Like, he, it is just sort of like in a normal bit of fiction you'd be like i hope they end up with randy rand because he yes. is sweet he's nice he's he's, he's a, interesting he's, he's an artist he's yeah. got a burgeoning career yeah. mm-hmm. i think um in a in like the so the character analogs for a rom-com i think tabitha's the one that like is hot and that they're like yeah. drawn to mm-hmm. but then like the one when they wake up and they're like oh the the one that i should be going after is the one who's right in front of me all along Randy Rand. Yeah. Oh, and for our listeners, Tabitha is the uh, president of Tight Fist Records, mm-hmm. tight which fist I was record. like, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah. I mean, look, there's a lot Ghost going Rider, on. Ghost Rider, Tight Fist. Yeah. No. no. That sounds wrong. It just sounds wrong all mm-hmm. over. But she is the owner, president of Tight Fist Records because her daddy got her the company. And I was like, oh, that's some like gem vibes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Except for without the holograms or anything fun. And yeah. she's a... Fairly sexist character. Like, she, yeah. almost every other oh, line is, yeah. Daddy! Daddy! No! You this know, is daddy. my company, Daddy! Yeah, it's pretty daddy. gross. It's, it, the switch was very funny to me, though. Yeah. Because she's nothing but, like, badass businesswoman, and then all of a sudden, whenever her dad is like, you're not, the press on this company is bad, I don't think that we should keep it going. Yes. And she goes, Daddy, but you said Daddy! Yeah, <laughs> every time. Yeah. Frequently in another room, and then she storms out. Yeah, Mostly, and then she comes yeah, out. Almost entirely in another room. Yeah, and she'll come out and like look like she's been crying, but she'll be like, oh, hi. Um, sorry, I have yeah, to Yeah, and then she's like, with my father. super business lady again. Yeah. There is one, there's one part of this book that makes me think that potentially whoever this Franklin W. Dixon is was somewhat aware or just like straight up fucking around. And it is, there is a bunch of stuff hidden in there that I think is purposefully sexual or not. 
uh, <laughs> there's at some point, I, I, God, I can't remember where it is. At some point, the number 69 shows up prominently and unnecessarily. Mm. Uh, and Randy Rand's room is yes, 420. 420. I noticed that. I was like, and 420, bro. The 420 jumps it jumps out. out. And, yeah. and it, both of like, them. It so jumps out. And for no reason. that You don't need to know Nothing. it. It never factors yeah. in. No. And there's it, a couple things like that where I'm like, well, I don't know. Maybe in 1992, that wasn't as much of a thing. But like, no, it yeah, feels yeah, yeah, like yeah, they're yeah, going, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, 420. Yeah. In um, So my very first concert was Alanis Morissette. Great. The Del Mar Fair in San Diego. Hmm. And when I was there, I bought an Alanis Morissette shirt. And I don't know if it's to my mother's ig- ignorance, to my mother's credit, or to my mother's detriment. That she let me buy what looked like a like baseball tee with the number sixty nine on the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who knows? But yeah. I was walking around as a thirteen year old, number sixty nine on my back, going Great. to junior high. Nobody, nobody at all. Anything. Yeah. Buy an, buy an eight ball patches and like yes, stickers. just living life. <laughs> and it was like that plus like. Aliens and peace signs and daisies and shit. Oh, yeah. It was the uh, early yes. to mid nineties. Yes. But like <laughs> nobody explained to me what sixty nine was or an eight ball. Mm-mm. That is so very funny. funny. That reminds me of my mom. To this day, is very naive mm-hmm. and very like she's just like almost childlike in her naivete. And um, she bought this like singing bowl, and we have like uh-huh. a couple singing bowls at home. But the one that she just bought. The thing that you use to looks like, like a dick. It <laughs> it has a straight up head and like a so urethra sorry. hole. And I shouldn't have jumped on your no, story, but I was so no, excited. It, like, it looks legit like a penis. And my mom is like showing us this thing. And both me and my sister are staring at it. And my sister's like, I hate that thing. <laughs> and my mom's like, what? And she's you just like, have I to want to make it sing. <laughs> If you, if you run you it the right way. It. Look, no, if you go too fast, you look, yeah, I'll you, show you. All right, you have to hold it right. Yeah. And I was just like, mom, that looks like a penis. And she was like, what? And then my sister was you like, I want to cut you for telling her. And my mom was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, that's awful. And like, and Micah was sitting there the whole time and he's just like smiling like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, I think a lot of times it just. They just don't yeah. know. No, I think my mom fully knew. My mom was much. You think cooler she was like me. afraid that like she was. She was just like, ah, eh, she doesn't know. It doesn't matter. I yeah. I think the it was like least resistance, maybe of being like yeah. either I can explain why she can't get that exactly. shirt. Yeah. I think it was like. Uh, also, she was like she was cool mom, but not like shitty cool mom. Not yeah. like everybody can drink here because I'd rather you do it here than somewhere else. She was just like, you know what? I'm gonna let you find your own path. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, either people are going to understand what it is or not. You're only 13. I don't feel the need to have that conversation yeah. with you. Yeah. 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 Um, she knew. She, she knew, knew, though. She did know. She knew. She let me walk around in a 69 <laughs> She's like, shirt. Look at Lindsay. No one ever said anything. I wonder if it made me cooler or weirder at school. Hard I think it probably made you cooler. Hey, people who listen to this podcast who I went to junior high with, if you exist, at me. <laughs> Let me know if you knew what was we'll going do on. A, we'll, we'll do a poll. Just hundreds yeah. of, we knew, we knew, we knew, we knew. We knew, we knew. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone I went to junior high yeah. school with, who I don't even remember, suddenly I'm, they, have they a Facebook all group listen that you're to them. Oh like, my God, you gotta it just in. says like, Podcast, Lindsay's 69 yeah. shirt. <laughs> it's a private group. Hashtag Lindsay's 69 shirt. <laughs> hey guys, Kelly here from Teen Creeps. I wanted to talk to you about our sponsor for this week's podcast, Quip. Listen, I am insane about my teeth, and it's hard to brush your teeth right for the right amount of time to make sure you're switching out your brushes enough. All of us could do with a little bit of guidance. And most brands focus on selling flashy gimmicks rather than better brushing, but not Quip. So what makes Quip so different? First up, Quip is an electric toothbrush that's a fraction of the cost of bulkier brushes, while still packing just the right amount of vibrations to help keep your teeth clean. Quip's built-in timer helps you clean for the dentist-recommended two minutes with guiding pulses that remind you when to switch sides. Next, Quip's subscription plans are for your health, not just convenience. They deliver new brush heads on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just $5, including free shipping worldwide. I just received my new brush heads, and it is so nice not even thinking about, oh god, I have to make sure that I order this thing. It's a thing that I do not even think about, and it just comes in, and I got healthy, clean teeth. And it is so easy because Quip got my back. Oh, 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 Quip got my back. Okay. 
Quip also comes with a mount, and it suctions right to your mirror and unsticks to use as a cover for hygienic travel wherever you take your teeth. And finally, everyone loves Quip. They were on Oprah's O-List, named one of Time's Best Inventions, and is the first subscription electric toothbrush accepted by the American Dental Association. And more importantly, Lindsay and I love Quip. I got my Quip posted up on my little mirror, and everybody that walks in is like, dang, you got a cute toothbrush. Dang, your teeth look amazing. And I'm like, those two things are related, boo-boo, because I have Quip. Plus, they're backed by a network of over 20,000 dentists and hygienists, and hundreds of thousands of happy brushers use Quip every day. So, you're thinking, how can I get in on this sweet, sweet Quip deal? First up, Quip starts at just $25, boo-boo, and if you go to getquip.com slash teencreeps right now, that's getquip.com slash teencreeps, you'll get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash teencreeps, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash teencreeps, getquip.com slash teencreeps. Um, so there are... Something that uh, Lindsay and I were kind of talking about that makes this book worthwhile are the raps. Raps mm-hmm. are really good. Yeah. The raps are very good. Um, I was wondering if we could rap, like, rap them. Mm-hmm. Do you guys want to rap? Do you guys, mm-hmm. you guys, Do you guys rap? want to pull up a chair, flip it around, there's straddle one it, longer and one. rap? There's, yeah, that's there's marks. one in the beginning on page eight. What you do, I believe, pretty is short. what that's called. Yeah, that's what you do. And then the last page one is pretty long. I will say yeah. that what you do with a what... Letter U and do. I was like, I believe that is a yeah, rap. I believe that too. I, I, yeah, I, I totally. honestly think it's like a decade too early, nineteen ninety, because that's yeah. like a Britney yeah. song. That's, that's like a, what you do is a early two thousands pop mm-hmm. home run, mm-hmm. like the Neptunes mm-hmm. did. Yeah, yeah. So uh, credit that credit four twenty. Yeah. Okay, so do we want to like lay down a beat for you, and then you can? Oh my god, this? that is my nightmare. You do it. I'm not good at beat. I don't think I've ever beatbox. I could try to pull up okay. an app. <laughs> pull up an app. <laughs> Oh, I think it's good. What you do, I do too. <laughs> Get past the skin, I'm just like you. I breathe the air, the earth we share. We should unite and fight for right. That's it. That's the whole rap. Oh, okay. And the next okay. line is Joe saying, that's what I like about Randy's music. He has a real social conscience. <laughs> it's so, and like multiple times in this book, he goes somewhere and like performs this and people are like, Fuck yes! <laughs> no, people are dying in the streets oh, from this are, wonderful yeah. song. Fucking loving this shit. Like, no, everyone loves it. He's huge. He's, he's like, he's like a socially conscious Eminem. He's like JT huge. He is, he yeah. is huge. JT huge. Like, oh, people I, are screaming. You know what? I guess he's Marky Mark huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, for a moment in time. Yeah. It Tell Randy Rand that he has a bright future in film ahead of him. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Tell him that one day he's going to be in he's a film called The Happening. Yeah. And people are going to love it. Every, yeah. It's all going to be worth it once he gets that first review from The Happening. Yeah. Mm. Yep. That's mm. going to do it. Yeah. All your hard work rapping paid off. Yeah. Uh, can I read my favorite exchange in this? Yes. Please do. Please, by all means. So they've caught um, uh, Blue Lu Cheng and uh-huh. they're taking him away. And this is what happens. Uh, Joe gave Chang a huge grin as he left his office. See ya. Glad I'm not you. You just oh. couldn't resist one parting shot, could you? Frank said, chuckling. Joe said, cradling his ribs, I guess there's something about nearly being killed that brings out my sarcastic side. So first oh, of all, they, yeah, that jumped out at me so hard. That shows a, a gross misunderstanding of what sarcasm yes, is. Thank because you. otherwise, see ya. Glad I'm not you. Means if it's sarcastic, he, really... he does. Wish he was him he getting arrested. He was him. Also, it's see you wouldn't want to be. Yeah, no. It's not see you oh glad God. I'm not you. That's, that's it, no it's, one. That has no, that has no charm no. or like rhyme or reason. No. And I'll see you glad I'm not you. And then like, huh, you just had to stick the knife in, didn't you, bro? <laughs> it's like, what are you, well, it's not what even are you worth referring commenting. to, Frank? I know. It's not, <laughs> it's so boring. It's not worth pointing out. No. But they're constantly doing that with each other. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. that's a zinger. And it's like, what are you talking about? I was going to say one moment did jump out at me. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, just this one moment is could be good noir. And it comes on the same page as when we get the lyrics to what you do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's just before. And it says, where do we start? Joe asked as the cab pulled to a stop. Where we always start, Frank said, handing the driver a 20 at the bottom. 
Oh, yeah, I, I remember that. Okay. I right. Actually, I remember cool. thinking like, oh, that was a decent line. Yeah, yeah. What I loved about um, when they fight the ninjas mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. that it is, okay, it <laughs> that is- That line is very funny. The <laughs> Hardy Boys. Yeah. Okay. Two of them unarmed. Yes. It is four ninjas. Mm-hmm. One has a sword. One has throwing knives. Or no, throwing, throwing stars. stars. Yeah, knives mm-hmm. is far too subtle. Far, far. Uh, one <laughs> has nunchucks and another unknown. Yeah. Some type of weapon. And he's the scariest one. <laughs> he's because scariest. You don't know what weapon yeah. that is. Hasn't revealed it yet. All you have, like, but they're fine. Yeah. The Hardy Boys are fine. All you have to do is there is literally like, he got him good with a old fashioned roundhouse punch. And I feel like they're constantly doing like good old boy, all American oh, like yeah. punches and kicks. Cause white wins. Cause white wins. White, white wins. wins. Um, can I read to you how I read the rap in my head at, that happens at the end? Yes. Yes. Cause I think there's no other. Well, we should say first. Oh like, sure. Why? Let's give context. Why? Sure. Yeah. So they've, uh, yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and say, so the person who killed Martinelli. Yes is in fact Tabitha mm-hmm. because yes. she was trying to protect her company. But right. then but then it seemed like the Hardy boys were too close to figuring it out. So she sent her two sound engineers. <laughs> yeah, yes. the most jacked sound engineers. Yeah. Uh to try to kill them and then she gets found out when they try to ab- when they abduct Randy Rand and the Hardy boys, but Beastmaster J saves them, which again, okay, yeah. not not racist. Cool. Unexpected. Um, and and so blah, blah, blah. They saved the day. Randy Rand's given his concert at Madison Square Madison Garden. Square Garden. Yeah. Sells out. Great. You're far above Tight Fist Records at that point, yeah. but whatever. And Beastmaster J goes out. They've, they've fucking solved their beef. They've solved that beef. And then this happens. So... Randy is on stage mm-hmm. and he's like, I need the Beastmaster to join me for this, for this round, or for, for the chorus. Randy and the Beastmaster sing or rap this part. Yo, it's Frank and Joe. Yo, it's Frank and Joe. If you're innocent of the crime, if you're staring at hard time, if the walls are closing in, if your options are running thin, yo, it's Frank and Joe. Yo, it's Frank and Joe. Frank and Joe will come through. Frank and Joe know what to do. Don't even <laughs> think about making tracks. Just fill these homies in on the facts. Yo, it's Frank and Joe. Yo, it's Frank and Joe. And Joe says, I bet it'll be a hit. <laughs> and Frank says, it's definitely fresh. First of all, I want to say, you just so sold me on that goddamn rap. Because- <laughs> That, I like, couldn't honestly, read it correctly. Like, like circa was... 2007. Like, do you remember Uffy? Do you remember that European like mm. rapper Uffy? She mm-hmm. would like what you just did. Like, she like rapped on the Justice album. She had a track, I think. Like, and she was like one of those sort of like blog mm-hmm. uh, uh, people. And that was spot on. <laughs> like, <laughs> truly, really, you just put like a minimalist beat behind there. It's like, yeah, okay. There was a brief yeah, period yeah. where people. Yo, were, it's Frank and Joe. Joe. Yo, it's, it's Frank and Joe. And, and, <laughs> well, because otherwise you can't you make I it mean. work. Well, because I kept trying to, and this is where you went right and I was going wrong. I kept trying to make the the verse fit with the chorus of Yo, It's Frank and Joe. I think we're beyond verse and chorus at this point in I, the book. I know. I was like, they claim I'm it's calling the chorus, it that, but, but meh. Yeah, because the Beastmaster joining him on the chorus, which means he then sat back twice and then joined in. Wait, so the course is again. just Yo, it's Frank and Joe? Yeah, Yo, it's Frank and mm. Joe. That's so, I just imagine the whole audience being like, who the like fuck are Frank yeah. and Joe? Yo, it's Frank and Joe. Yo, it's Frank and Joe. If you're innocent of the crime, if you're staring at hard time, if the walls are closing in, if your options are running thin, yo, it's Frank and Joe. Yo, it's Frank, Frank and, and Joe. Joe. Frank and Joe. Welcome through. And that's where like that's everything where, yeah. started right. to fall apart for me. Uh, I was like, okay, uh, okay. And then uh, no, well, not even, at all. Even what you read off the cover falls apart. Where no, it's, yeah. Cool is the rule when you're on the case and danger's in your face. There are not enough sim- syllables no, in and danger's in your face to all. match well, the, the first part. The mm-hmm. thing that I feel like happens with these raps is the only thing that the writers care about is rhyming. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. not cadence and, or like, like that beat does not matter. Let me see. The, also, as the one we've again. learned from many a rapper, like yeah. make whatever yeah. the fuck yeah. you want yeah. to oh, rhyme. Rhyme room when you're on a case and uh uh, <laughs> danger, <laughs> danger, danger, dangers in your face. Ah, uh, what a what a what a what a, what a, what a, what a, 
I feel like you have to do a lot of like, uh, yeah. uh. You have to throw have to some other time. stuff in there. Yeah. yeah. yeah or yeah. that thing that's so popular right now in like rap to be like, ha. Oh, maybe that would help. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, do a little couple of ha. You know what's else like, helpful? Ha. Imagining a lot of these are like, yeah. Yeah. like remixes. Yeah. So it almost works. Yeah. So yeah, they've yeah. got another yeah. thing that they can't alter and they're <laughs> rapping over that. Yeah. And then they're like, ah, shit. Uh, you know, I'm uh, just going to stick with the know, way yeah. I write. <laughs> ah, ah, shit. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I was so confused by the Blue Lou character. I thought he was, I mean, his name was Blue Lou and he kept throwing blue snakes around. I was like, this is going to be their red herring. Yeah. Like that that's their, they're, they're, they're being cute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in a way they were, except he was also, I mean, like he was some sort of ninja lord and probable, probable yeah. murderer. So like it didn't quite work. It should have just been like, I'm just, a, yeah, I sell I don't know what you want from me. Yeah. Usually a red herring is like, I am not a threat. Yeah. He's like, I'm not the guy you want, but I am definitely a threat. And I'm also kind of the guy you want. Yeah. But it, <laughs> I was so confused because it's like they go and confront him and he's like, yeah, I've been leaving signs, but I didn't have, it wasn't to hurt you. I was just what trying to throw the you signs off. Then? The snake and the, the snake. Knife. And the okay. Knife. He was like, but no, I didn't have any, but he follow you on the subway. In that I didn't put yeah player. in that tape player and um which is the thing and that they go that we in, have not mentioned. Yeah. Uh I didn't yeah, I just had them follow you. I wouldn't have my guys hurt you unless you deserved it. And then they leave and they come back and it's kind of the same thing of like, no, I didn't do that. I I told my guys just to scare you off, but I I would never. I'm not I'm not that kind of guy. But like Frank like flies off the handle yeah. though. But right? it's, Frank's it's not even hothead. Just so wait, where is it? Oh yeah. So Joe and Frank took the stairs up one flight to Chang's office. Mm. Joe took a deep, deep breath, turned the knob, and pushed the door in. Mm -hmm. Blue Lu Chang sat on his sofa, seemingly waiting patiently for them. Come in, my young friends, Chang said, smiling. What a pleasant surprise. Now listen, Frank said as he and Joe entered Chang's office. We're not here to cause trouble. We just wanted you to know that Chief of Police Sam Peterson is a close friend of ours, and he won't appreciate all the threats you've been throwing at us. Again, Blue Lou exclaimed, standing up. This is the third time you've barged in on me. And then he's like, I never would have done anything about that. But now that you've pissed me off, here are some ninjas. Yeah. And it's oh, like, but well, no, it's you were just... It's because Frank flies off the handle, right? Like he grabs him and like put and he's like, I'm sick and tired of all this. And I think he takes umbrage with the touching. Yeah. Maybe. I think but Blue Lou like might be in the right. To yeah. Go. I think Blue Lou is in the right. They in came into his yeah. place of work. Two teenagers yes. from Connecticut kept bugging him. Yeah. He's yeah. trying to do business. So he sick ninjas on them. That's what I do. That's what I if I had ninjas at disposal. Absolutely I'd be like there are these teenagers smoking oh, weed yeah. next to my backyard. Yeah. Please <laughs> get them away from here. They're upsetting the dogs. Room four twenty. <laughs> Um, yeah, so blah, blah, blah. Because Frank, like, touches him on the shoulders yeah. or something. Yeah, so, but it's like, so Frank touches him on the shoulders <laughs> and then lets him go. Yeah, and then he. And then, and Frank is like, okay, let's, everyone just relax before someone gets hurt. Chang shook his head apologetically. Hurting people is not my style, especially people who have done no wrong to me. You've crossed that line today, Joe Hardy, and for yeah. that. And he has, like, those ninjas they're just ready. waiting yeah. in the Well, they're ninjas. You don't know where And I was are. like, yeah. but. He actually got lucky. He didn't know if they were there or yeah. not. <laughs> he never they might have been their break. He like, yeah. like, well, you've crossed that. Okay, yeah, you've crossed okay, that yeah, line. Yeah. He was stalling a little. He's like, yeah. I usually don't. Uh, I'm going to check my Apple Watch. Yeah, they texted. They're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, uh, it's just like it was back and forth between trying to decide whether Blue Lou was like a Beastmaster J yeah. or truly a threat. And he was trying to have his cake and eat it too. And it just didn't work out. Now, one of the things that like was stumping me about this book a little bit. I was like, after I uh, uh, finished it was thinking about like, why, why does this book exist? And who is this for? Like, cause like so many of these like pulpy kind of YA books, you can trace it to like, Oh, okay. Well, this is the market. Yeah. And it's for like, you know what? You're not hit straight on sex yet. And so this is titillating in that way. Or like the horror kind of triggers a certain mm -hmm. thing. I have no, I like, 
I was a boy growing up. I'm sure that these were marketed <laughs> to me. And I'm like, what was I getting out of it? There's not even There's like no fun action. adventure. Wait, There's so no is, action. It should, this should be like mystery and action. Yes. And it is neither. Like I get more of the ones where they're on speedboats shooting machine guns sure. around. Yeah, because yeah. I'm like, okay, that seems cool. There's nothing cool about this. Mm -mm. There's nothing sexy about it. There's nothing like scary or spooky yeah. about it. So I'm like, well, what? The, yeah, what somebody was just book? like, oh, they're into rap now, right? I think it literally is that. I think it's literally like, you but know, this was around black rapper. They wouldn't be friends right. with yeah, him. Yeah, it's too much. Parents too much. Buy it. Yeah. Well, because yeah, you get in trouble if you mm -hmm. buy that. Uh huh. Uh, it 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 does seem like it's desperately trying to jump onto what they think is a fad, and yeah. they're like, oh well, I mean, we got to do just one of these. But it, yeah, it's it's so interesting that like so many books that age, they're like wish fulfillment. Yeah. Therefore, titillation, or they, there is some sort of moral that you're supposed to learn. This has none of it. Because it's not even like the moral is, hey, don't duplicate tapes, because this is before anyone had CD burners. They talk about the burning machine. Oh, the laser the that laser they have burning to use from machine. Hong Kong. Yeah, it's very fancy. They only have it in Hong Kong. And he's like, okay, it's so weird to like go like, you can't, like, like why would I as a kid read this, even in 1992, when I could go and I could get a book that has the same level of like coolness, but also has one of those other things? Yeah. <laughs> On the being such a threat to typefist, <laughs> every time I say that, it's funny to me. It's very stupid because she's like, oh, they're underselling us. And oh, so it's the a threat. Bragging. But then when they go to Chinatown, that kid they run into, Nguyen, he is like, yeah, I'll tell you where they are if you buy 10 cassettes. Mm -hmm. And they walk away and it like cuts them having bought the cassettes. And they're like, 10 cassettes for $100. What a ripoff. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I thought that the whole fucking point was, this cheaper? was that it's cheaper. Yeah, how much were cassettes and in 1992? Like, like 10 CDs bucks, were right? like 15. Yeah, so it was probably like 9, 10 bucks. It's like yeah. the same. So it's the same. It's Maybe, the fucking you know, same. it was just, you know, he was paying for the information, so it was upcharge. Maybe you know, Maybe. he's like, I know what he wants. He doesn't want these tapes. He wants, because I will tell Maybe. you, my first, uh, I, I remember buying a bootleg CD uh, probably in it was, Des it was Destiny's Child. So what would that would be? Two thousand. <laughs> I've never owned a bootleg CD because I respect <sighs> music artists. And you know what? Even though I complain that this book is racist against Asians because it conflates three different types of Asian as one. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's a problem. And yeah. you know, they're you know the, whatever. There uh, are three different types of shady Asians. Oh, that's right. And there, you know, one is like the runner. One yeah. is the uh the like. Uh, imports exports guy yeah. yeah and one is the ninja yeah mm -hmm. um three distinct flavors of shady yeah. asians <laughs> shady asians uh sh keep your eyes out for crazy shady asians coming out um i Kelly's writing that and I, producing it <laughs> and no one will watch it um i will say that cd was purchased in, in chinatown. chinatown actually i want to say maybe little saigon so it's my people well, it's like, I mean, sure, you find that. You find bootleg stuff. Oh, yeah. It so, is so not I, that much I of a say, threat. Like, every now and then, like in the early 90s, when, in early mid 90s, you go to New York, Chinatown did not have a monopoly on bootleg shit. Yeah. Like the you whole can go fucking anywhere. island yeah. was just people with like Out bootleg movies and DVDs wares. and yeah. the CDs on the, the blanket so they can fold it up yep. and bolt when the cops show up. Mm -hmm. So it's so weird that they're like, the only, oh, look, if you want to buy a burnt CD, you can go to Chinatown, Chinatown, all right? Watch, for, watch your back. Yeah. And it's not like, I mean, bootlegs were nowhere on the level as downloading mm -hmm. became later. It is not that much of a threat. People are still mostly yeah. going to a Sam Goody or a Tower Records. Yeah. It is it is weird because it, I think that it reveals like how little is known about this world of rap because they're like, well, we can't have them be like fighting about drugs. I bet yeah. that so, that is the whole problem. They're like, well, let's have them fight about what? Like bootlegging? I don't know. Let's pretend that Maybe, white teens are going to Chinatown in droves. I think some of these other books are about <laughs> drugs. I re I, I'm trying to remember. Oh, that's true. Which remember ones? when we read Low Dunk and it was about black tar heroin? <laughs> yeah. Low Dunk? Lois Duncan. Ah. We've taken a calling her Low Dunk because <laughs> <laughs> we're cool. Because she's our best friend. She's our best friend. Her ghost is our best friend. Um, I just wanted to, I thought I'd read a couple more examples please, yes. of please, them please. getting into food time and oh, yeah. location too much. It was after seven o'clock when Frank and Joe hopped off a bus just a couple of blocks from Tight Fist Records. They had killed time by eating at a small Chinese restaurant near the hotel. 
Who cares? <laughs> oh, they go to get falafel. Cares. They get falafel with uh, Frankie because. Oh, yeah. Wait, Frankie? Frank? Is that his name? Randy Rand. Not Joe Frankie and Frank. Frankie, Frankie, Frank. Eh, same thing. Frank is one of the Hardy Boys. <laughs> it is stunning they never go Frankie by Joe and Joe and Frankie. Frankie, Frankie. Frankie like and Joey Kane. It was, you know, they call you know Randy Rand. The police call him Rand as if that's his last name. You notice that? They're like, oh, well, Rand's on, and I'm like, what? Yeah. Maybe it is. And we then also, know. you know how Marky Mark, the name is Mark, and Marky's the nickname. Yeah, Rand is not a. It is a first name. It is. It can yeah, be, I, yeah, I knew. I knew one Rand. Oh my god! Did you call him Randy? I called him Randy Rand. He was a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Real sweet guy. Real sweet guy. Uh, here's another one. Joe and Frank were lucky to find a cab to take them back to their hotel. While they rode the hotel elevator to the fourth floor, Joe thought long and hard about the case. He was upset that his current favorite musician was a murder suspect. <laughs> I would be too. <laughs> yeah. This is a sequence that I thought was, so this is a, they try to do cliffhangers on the end of these, but a lot of times the cliffhangers are like, and they found a burnt CD. I really hope it's uh, what I think it is. This one so. is. Uh, I remember uh, the dog ear. Uh, before Frank could do anything, the man pressed his hands against Frank's chest and pushed him down towards the subway track bed, right into the path of the oncoming train. Holy shit. Holy shit. The next line on the next chapter is, Frank didn't fall though. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what the yeah. hell? He managed to wrap his arms around a pole. So you said this interesting thing. Again, it's a book. Budget is not a concern. Yes. So you can have you can him have a whole like, action fight. tactical roll in front of the thing and yeah. dodge and, and, yeah, and do something cool. Thing. No, he just didn't and fall. D- didn't, He's just literally he like, fall, whoa. Yeah. Though. He didn't fall, though. And also, you might assume he did. I promise you he did. Right. Not. That inc- that, the inclusion of the word, though, means they knew exactly what they were doing. Like yeah. They were like, e- we know this is kind of shitty. Yeah. He didn't fall, though. Sorry, we want to be cool, but then they're afraid kids would jump in front of subways, so we had to take it out. Uh, here's another here's another choice passage. Frank and Joe said their goodbyes, agreeing to check in later, and left the studio. Are you ready to head to Chinatown, Frank asked. Only if we can grab lunch there, Joe reminded his brother. But we had Chinese food last night, Frank reminded him. Good point. How about some brick oven pizza? We can get that in Bayport, Joe said. Sounds great, Frank said. 45 minutes later, Frank and Joe were sitting in the original Sal's brick pizza oven pizzeria with a pepperoni pie and a couple of sodas in front of them. This was a great idea, Joe, Frank said, when the last slice had been put away. Now we'd better get down to business. Nothing no, <laughs> to no, do no. with anything. It would be that, but that would be an amazing sequence if it was like, yeah, yeah you're right. We can get that in Bayport. Uh, oh, maybe, yeah, so maybe we, didn't, we could get some yeah. like shawarma. Yeah, I don't really feel like, I don't know. It says like, every, it. like, it yeah, it's keeps, just like a little heavy. And like, keeps, I, yeah. like, I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like we just, didn't we just get yeah, some with okay. Randy Rand? Yeah, salad some, honestly, not like, salad. I know yeah. that I'm going to be running around soon and I can't yeah. have meat mm-hmm. right Well, here's before. the thing. It's just like, I feel like maybe we should just eat when we get there in okay. case we run into any transit mm-hmm. problems. Yeah, that's a pretty good Because it's okay. going to take yeah, us like yeah, 45 yeah. minutes. I just don't want to wait on the offshoot. Like, what if we don't find a place? Like, I don't want to. That's true. Because we don't know the area. I get really mean. Okay, well, are you cool with burgers? I mean, no, I know that burgers <sighs> exist everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I could. I know a really good Thai place, actually. And uh, ooh, 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 you ooh, know what? it's that's... closed on Mondays. It's, oh, clo- it's oh, Monday. Oh, it's right, closed. Right, right, we can't you know go what? there. That's fine because I was going to say, what's the difference between Thai and Chinese? Because I'm I think one's a party brother and I don't oh, know the difference. Yeah. Oh, one, one, is, one is a ninja. But one is a ninja. The other is a Yeah, both, both do crime. crime. Okay, Not... see, that's why I mix them up all the time because of the crime. Yeah, because of the crime. Yeah. Because it's like, I don't know. Which shady food is which shady mm-hmm. Asian? Right. Stereotype. I mean, I get it. This ain't Connecticut, man. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's right. why they have to tell us yeah. all the time. Yeah. Because otherwise I'd be in the back of my head wondering, did they eat? <laughs> oh, but have they must they be eaten? starving. And how long did it take them to get places? Um, which is actually a big thing in these books that we read of making sure we know that they've eaten mm-hmm. and how they've gotten from point A to point B. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah, don't eat, I don't care. Well, I wonder if it. I wonder if it is like like old movies, like you know, like um, schlocky B movies. There are always tons of scenes of people just driving from one place to yeah. the other because they had to pad the time, and it was a cheap way to fill that mm-hmm. up. So they'd have a sixty-five minute movie, but you had to get to eighty to get to the to to get projected. And I wonder oh. if honestly, a lot of these books, when you're just cranking out books. Yeah. You're just like, you know what's the easiest thing in the world is what I want some pizza right now. I'm just going to have them eating pizza, and then yeah. how do they get there? Rather than characterization or yeah, any sort of story it's just like the thing that i always overdo in my scripts is dialogue yeah it's so easy to have a scene go on with two characters talking go and go and go what do that because there's not 
nearly enough talking mm. in this book. No, there's and a lot of it just, is, it's the same back yeah. and forth, yeah. back and forth. You're bad. Get out of here. We know this. You stay out of this. Let's go get pizza. They also have like very wholesome hanging out time. Like when they hang out with Randy and he's like, hey, hey. he's like, you guys want to hang out in my hotel room? Which like, they if you so think of someone do. that's like very successful in the music industry, it's like, do you want to hang out in my oh, hotel yeah. room? It's like, oh, drugs. Yeah. Yeah. But they just. Best case scenario. They just oh. like, yeah, yeah. Best case scenario. But they just kind of sit there. They do go out with him one of the nights, but I forget. They go to that's rap the clubs. night of yes. the night of the of the cover. Yes, where he he in one sentence does a rap. Yeah, he like jumps up on stage and people go nuts. Yeah, because yeah. they're going to the rap. Yeah, clubs. yeah, yeah. And Joe and Frank are like, I can't believe we get to see this live. Oh yeah, and it's by the end of the night where Frank wants to fuck him too. Yeah, yeah. Also, like I remember now, I, so much of this is going on, and the sweet naivete of randy rand and also the fact that the boys still buy into it so all this is like crazy like they're involved in all these crime rings and they're still like mm, i can't wait to hear the demo of yeah. of randy rand's newest album and then like that's how they get tricked um with the, with bomb. the bomb that uh -huh. everyone really shakes the fuck off they, like, yeah. a bomb a, a pretty crafty bomb goes off and they're like oh man it was a bomb not the demo like that. <laughs> yeah that's the also, attitude. And they trash they their run room. into people later. Somebody's like, hey, what happened to your eyebrow? And he's like, had a run in with a door. It's like, no, a bomb yeah. blew up in your yeah. face. He like literally in your face. The bomb blows up in one of the brothers' face. He flies across the room. I think it's Joe. Yeah. It he is. flies yeah, across Joe. the room. There's like shrapnel everywhere. There's like the bed is on fire. They just like throw a cup of water on the bed. And then <laughs> he like washes his cut and they're yeah, like, they All right, put let's a towel go. on it. And I'm like, those poor housekeepers. It's just like, yeah. like they're just like, what the fuck happened? They're like, should we tipping. report this? And they're like, no, <laughs> no, no. There's also a thing where like the, the the Hardy Boys. It's supposed to be like the the bookish one and the, and the jockish one, right? Yeah. Like, so like Frank mm -hmm. is supposed to be the the sort of smart, serious, organized one, and then Joe flies off the handle. And he's the more like fighty, athletic one, and that, that's why they're a good team. And in this book, that just goes. They keep saying it. They keep being like Frank's level head one, and then they're both like no, and throwing punches <laughs> yeah. and roundhouse kicks and everything. And there's no the, difference the between these two. The only difference between them in this book is who was the original Randy Rand yes. fan, yeah, and who is coming around to him. Because I remember in the last book Joe we read, him, right? it yeah, would Joe switch liked. between them, yeah. and mm -hmm. I would always know whose perspective I was in. In this one, I had no idea from one chapter to another. No well, idea. And Dead on Target, it has a name, is, uh, I'm sorry, I think right. it was Joe's. Not all Hardy yeah. Book case files are alike. <laughs> uh, Joe's girlfriend blows up within five oh, pages. yeah, she dies. So he's furious the whole time because he's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. What, Tiffany or whatever, she died. <laughs> oh, wasn't it like Illyria or something it weird like that? It was yeah. something weird. It, it was wasn't Illyria because that's from Angel. from Angel. I think it was a 50s name because it was a character from yeah. the original. Like Ilona oh, or yeah, something. Ilona? And so they just blew yeah. her the hell up. Ilona? It that's you're closer. real and Joe is the hot headed one. Joe's hot headed and, and Frank, Frank is, is bookish. Not, yeah, in this book he's not. No one's bookish no. in this book. Um, no one's reasonable. Even they wait. keep saying Frank is reasonable and like yeah. Joe's got to be reined in, but no, not in their actual behavior. It's all tell no show. And Joe is blonde hair. Joe is blonde. Frank is brunette. Brunette. And they both look like they're 35. On the yeah, they're, they're definitely. This looks like a Worse, porn. even. Yeah. I mean, like. This it looks really... like a 1980s porn. Like, Joe looks, he he looks like he could be young and attractive. And then Frank. Frank looks tired. Looks like he's, he looks tired. He looks old. And he looks <laughs> like he's, like, um, accosting the girl that he's actually trying yep. to hold oh, back. Yeah. No, he looks the like he's French dancing her face. His face. Yeah. It's horrible. It is gross. It <laughs> seems gross. like, yeah, he's. it seems like he's getting off on holding her back. Yeah. And it's not cool. Yeah. I mean. It's a very weird expression they painted on. Oh, yeah. His tongue is on the top of his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No. That's, you, a, that's a weird look. Just like keep your mouth closed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, keep it closed. Yeah. I mean, I this is I, how, how, mm -hmm. how bad I, I was at reading this book mm -hmm. until I read that rap out loud to you guys. Uh -huh. I literally thought. I forgot that the main characters are named Frank and Joe. And I thought <laughs> that the rappers were referring to themselves <laughs> while rapping together. I thought they were like, it's us, Frank and Joe. Yeah, we're Frank the best. And Joe. <laughs> like, Joe, like, we, buried our, we buried the hatchet. Yeah. But I, when reading that, I was like, Frank and Joe, that sounds familiar. And I was like, oh, the main characters. 
Just singing a nice yeah. rap about people nobody knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're at the warp tour of rap. There's yeah. one other element to this that I think I do, I do think backs up the subtext of Frank and Joe are going to fuck Randy uh, Rand. Yeah. Uh, and it is Tabitha, because in the first bit of the book, they're like, uh, Joe's like, oh man, she's so attractive. Should I ask her out? And then as the book goes on, Randy Rand gets nicer and she gets more uh, like just uh, shrill. She's like yeah. written yeah. like horribly. A she's baby. like a, a little harpy. Yeah. And yeah. it's sort of like if you could, again, in that sort of like, Sort of like old yes. sweaty pulp being like, okay, well, this is the woman that you're supposed to be with, but like, look how wrong that is. Hey, why don't you come and hang out in my hotel room? Yes. I'm a shirtless superstar. Yeah. Also, he's, when they meet him, he is toweling, toweling his off. own body off. Yeah. Yeah. And he's shirtless. Yeah. And he expresses an interest in Tabitha, but we spend like no time with yeah. her. There's it's only, not even like, whoa, like the dame made a turn. It's like, oh, right, Tabitha. I forgot she was in the book half the time. Exactly. I think she's the only female character she is, that shows up. Hundred percent. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Other oh, than like there is girls. A female police officer. Is there? Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. There mm -hmm. is a female police officer. Yeah. yeah. I think she had a name, but I like they he gave the name of two police officers. Yes. And then later right. it was yeah. like it was one of the Torres's female people. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh God. And then the whole thing too with Torres like harping on about that autograph. Where he, oh, yeah. He like I mean, would not stop. Yeah. He was so grumpy about <laughs> having to have them tag along. And as soon as he found out they were, I think, A, the Hardy Boys, and B, mm -hmm. helping Randy Rand, it was like he was so full of glee, so excited. Come along anywhere. Please, please, please. And then that other guy was so aggressively anti Hardy. Yeah. Yes. I don't even remember his name. Or mm -hmm. what role he had in anything. He appeared out of nowhere. I thought Taurus was on the case. They're friends with Oh, Peterson. yeah, that Rando guy. Who's the who was Rando mean? guy? Who's he like, was like, like, like cop, and then Taurus was like, Stay in your oh, room. Don't like feel like yeah, weird. He's he's just a he he's a good cop, but he has to interrogate everybody. But exactly, stay in your room. Why are you like don't come in here? His orders <laughs> were so weird though. Yeah. The the way they were checking out it was, it was oh yeah. Grant, he knocks on their door to tell them that they better not be covering up that punk's lies. And they're like, we're not. <laughs> yeah. At that, that point, you're with the Hardy Boys. Yeah, no, it's like, like, why is he like, even doing this? Get out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, this is our hotel exactly. room. We are not suspects. Why are Hit you the here? Road. Yeah. Also, like, why even do that? Like, why even follow this, quote, lead? Like, it's not a, it's a non-lead. Like, yeah. Like, very we weird. to you. Yeah. We've done literally everything right uh, yeah. so far and also, in this low stakes and, case. And, so, and then... Do we ever fucking see that guy no, again? No, he it's gets this, the fuck out of Dodge. This random bit of friction that has no bearing on anything. There's no stakes. It's very. He annoying. just comes in and says, "Like you guys better not be lying to me." And then he's and then leaves. Like I don't remember seeing him ever again. No, he never comes back. Oh, I did call it pretty early that it was those engineers. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. a they were way too yeah. buff. It, Introduced immediately as like two, it, it might as well say two very strong, sketchy looking engineers looked at them for a long Where, time. Yeah. Tight fist buttons. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone the was like clue. decked out in tight. Like that was a that requirement so of Tabitha's. stupid and it weird. It was so dumb. That they all have to wear those buttons. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was very stupid. Like what a weird dress code. It's not going to help your <gasps> label. Do you know what I just remembered? Okay. I don't. I totally forgot this part, but there, so like later on, we find out that like ninjas are there. Mm -hmm. But before we find out ninjas are there, Frank and Joe are like, oh my God, there's like, I keep thinking I'm seeing like people in all black. Do you remember oh. this part? Oh, <laughs> yes. And they're like, I thought there's people in all black. And yeah. I was like, why are they even mentioning like, that? Why is this interesting? And then I forgot. It was on their rap night about yes. town. And there's like people in black. And then it's oh, the ninjas. Oh, they're by the ninjas. <laughs> Foreshadowing, good. <laughs> so you know yeah, that like, means I that feel was like, like don't planned. Ugh, that was like like a like they're like all right. So long, like long story arc. We know we need those ninjas to come in. So let's plant the seed. Ninjas are coming. Ninjas are around. Here's the thing. Yes, I don't think it had anything to do with anything. I <sighs> think they were just like, man, we're some Connecticut guys. Everyone's here wearing black. Yeah. New York. Yeah. I think it was just that. I don't even think it was connected to the ninja thing. I don't give it even that much credit. So it was just literally a coincidence. I think it was just literally Great. like New York rappers wear black. Mm -hmm. We wear khakis. Mm -hmm. We're from Bayport. 
Well, to be fair, they, based on this cover, they wear jeans and tucked in t-shirts, one of which yeah. has no sleeves. He's cut yeah. off his sleeves. And Muscle. Of, That's Joe, though, right? Joe. Joe is, I think Joe's a little cooler than Frank, too. He is a little bit cooler, yeah. yeah. Frank's a little more like... Well, the reasonable ones are never cool. Mm -mm. No. It's like the he's the Elizabeth. Yeah. Yeah, he's the Elizabeth. Yeah. Well, that was a Sweet Valley High comparison. Was it? Mm -hmm. Elizabeth is the Versus very Jessica. boring bookish one, and mm -hmm. Jessica is a psychopath. Oh. Yeah. Like Jessica. literally a good straight up evil. Straight up sociopath. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, this book. That's the book. I was laughing I, while reading it. I will say that. There were parts where I chuckled. I yes. did think I was going to read it in like 20 minutes, and it took me a lot longer than I thought yeah, it would. Yeah, and because it was I, was, I, I kept having put down and be like, <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I don't know what's going on with these CDs, but I'm having yeah. a hard time tracking. I skimmed a lot. Like mm -hmm. when it came to like them just arguing about stuff, I yeah. was like, I don't care. I'm going to say that this episode is sufficient. Don't read the book if you haven't already. No, no. There's no, yeah. you don't truly have no to. reason to read this book. You don't book. have to. We don't told you what that. happens. Don't do that to yourself. We we love you too much. Don't yeah. do that I'm to gonna yourself. I'm going to do a speed read of as of when this came out, all 73. Titles. Okay, oh, right, good. Go, 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 go. Dead on Target, Evil Incorporated, Cult of Crime, The Lazarus Plot, Edge of Destruction, The Crowning Terror, Death Game, yes, yes, See No yes. Evil, The Genius Thieves, Hostages of Hate, Genius Thieves. <laughs> Brother Against Brother, uh -oh. oh, shit. Perfect Getaway, The Borgia Dagger, Too Many Whoa. Traitors, Blood Relations, Line of Fire, The Number File, A Killing in the Market, The Nightmare <laughs> in Angel City, Witness to Murder, Street Spies, Double Exposure, Disaster for Hire, Scene of the Crime, The Borderline Case, Trouble in the Pipeline, Nowhere to Run, Countdown, Countdown to Terror, Thick as thieves, the deadliest dare. Without a trace, blood money, collision course, final cut, the dead season, running on empty, danger zone, diplomatic deceit. Uh, fresh and blood, flesh and blood, not fresh and blood. Fresh and blood would be better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this one's good. Fright wave, highway no! robbery, the last laugh, strategic moves, castle fear, in self defense, foul play, nice. flight into danger, rock in revenge, dirty deeds, power play, <gasps> chokehold, uncivil war, web of horror, deep trouble uncivil beyond the law, web of height of danger, terror on track, spiked, open season, <laughs> deadfall, grave danger, final gambit, cold sweat, endangered species, no mercy, the phoenix equation, lethal cargo, the rough phoenix riding, equation. mayhem in motion, rigged for revenge, real horror, screamers, and bad rap. Wow. wow. Excellent work. Some Excellent. of those sound really And good. I just wanted to be clear, Spiked does have an exclamation point at the end Spike. and nothing oh, okay. else does. I bet Spiked. you oh, I think they the go undercover one was as my favorite. volleyball players. Yeah. yeah that's a, right. Manhattan uh, Beach Volleyball. Yeah, they're on the yeah. beach 100%. It's intensely yeah. sexual. 100%. Mm -hmm. I really liked Genius Thieves. I love Genius, Genius Thieves. 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 Really good. 10 out of 10. Yeah. And, oh, there was one other one where I was like, fuck yeah. Oh, it was the the. Borges? Oh, oh the, the Borges one is cool. Right? I also the liked Borgia dagger. Castle. Yeah. Oh, Castle Fear? Is that Castle what Castle Fear. Fear. It sounds like Doom. Mm -hmm. yeah, Castle Good. Fear sounds the fun. The Phoenix yeah. Equation. I Phoenix would read equation. that one. Mm -hmm. That sounds like spies, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Phoenix Equation sounds oh, like Warren Beatty's movie. Also, Rock and Revenge, because it's rock. Oh, yeah. The and letter N. Nice. Revenge. I'm going to guess it's almost the exact same as this, except was, just with uh, rock and roll. Yeah. Definitely going to say the same. Oh, I think it is. I think I remember seeing it. I think they're the Lazarus. My guess is, is it's either heavy good. metal or like oh, also panic about punk. a killing in the market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one is that like when the they go one. to like the south of France. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's or rock like, and revenge. Yeah, rock and revenge. Nerdy Cash boys. Or... Okay, I'm gonna look up the cover. I heard nerdy boys. Nerdy boys. Nerdy boys. No. Huh. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, it's not. <laughs> It does uh -oh. not involve, oh, it does involve rock and roll. They're on a catwalk. Yeah. They're like on a catwalk and there's a, a ninja. Oh, above the show. Oh, yeah, there's a ninja okay. kicking him. A he's, ninja, he's, Well, no, hold on, he's on camo pants. Yeah, <laughs> so, so he's, he's, he's a, American. Yeah. Oh, he's just masked. Yeah, yeah he's see. just wearing a ski mask, Kelly. It's hard to read. You know, I would think as an Asian, you could tell the difference. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Which, I could only which half. kind of shady Asian are you? Vietnamese. I, I'm oh, the runner. Yeah, but like, oh, okay, thank you. Runner. Mix hard rock with hard crime. And dangers bound to hit the top of the charts. It's hard Seriously, to that's a, a long res. one, too. I don't hate mixed hard rock with hard crime. That's pretty that's good. good. Ooh, peak of danger looks racist. Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> Oops. Just straight up. It looks like a tin tin. Good. Looks oh, like a tin yeah, yeah. tin. Tin uh -oh. goes to the Congo or that something. That is, uh, uh, uh oh. Three brown people in stereotypical Aztec masks oh, no. menacing the whitest man in khakis I've ever seen. <laughs> It's so bad. It's so bad. 
I wonder if that's their dad it's or gotta something. Be their dad. It's got to be their dad. It looks like oh, a fat George. Oh, I thought you Walker meant Bush. Frank he is was wearing the dad of the three brown. Frank yeah, is, be those. <laughs> <laughs> Frank is wearing a giant purple Jansport backpack. Nice. Ooh. It looks like he's probably got. We all were though. You know what Joe does or uh, Frank does look attractive in that one. Joe looks old in that one. Ooh, Frank looks like Frank from the back. Just from the back of his head, he looks like he might be attractive. His hair looks soft. It does look soft. His hair looks soft. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I'm soft in. hair. Um, Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this book, yeah. This yeah, book was I fine. Think, I think we've covered this We've book. done it, Pretty man. We've covered. done it. Thank you so much yeah. for coming oh, in and talking for, to us about this book. Thank Bernie. you to whoever yeah. uh, uh, tweeted this at you guys. Yeah, a million years ago. Yeah. But it was well worth the wait. And, it, you know, I, I, will, I agree with you. No one needs to read this book. I 100% encourage you to Google the image of the cover. Very oh. funny. Yeah, it's that's a requirement. Really, really good. Yeah. Can I actually take, because sometimes it's like we don't get a good heart high res image. Yeah. Um, high res it up. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in the, the lines. meantime, yeah. do you have anything you'd like to plug? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know what? Your impending child? My, yeah, I'm about to have a baby in, in five weeks. And so that's been a lot of what I've been been up to. But you can, you know what? I'm, oh, I want to keep sending people this because I thought it was good. No one saw it. But uh, on, on YouTube Red, I worked on a show called Do You Want to See a Dead Body that uh, Rob Hubel created. And it's really, really fun. And I wrote on it and directed it. Uh, and it came out like two weeks before Logan Paul actually showed a dead body. And that was kind of that. Oh, uh, my God. Uh, but it's, I really think the show is fun <laughs> and weird and good. And so if you, for some reason, have YouTube read, check it out. Do you want to see a dead body? That's nice. A good, that's a good solid plug. Yeah. That's a plug. Yeah, that's real. I, I, yeah, it's a real. You know what? Congrats on having that plug. Thank you. Yeah. yeah it's, it's. That's, you know, it's, I, I would like to say that we're going to make more, but absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> but absolutely not. Well, thank you again for doing this show. And thank you to our Patreon supporters who make the podcast possible. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Teen Creeps Pod. Oh, where can people find you on the internet? You can, I'm on Twitter at Fernie comma Alex, all written out. Um, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it there. The rest is for friends, well, you guys. Yeah. And you're mm -hmm. not my friends. <laughs> Um, next week, uh, if you guys are following along with us, we are going to be reading Bleeding Violet, the first book in the Portrero universe by Dia Reeves. Um, that I'm really excited because yeah, we were we, like, we need we to start from the beginning. Read Slice of Cherry. It turned out that there was another book in the universe that came first. And so we were like thrown into what was a great book without any kind of world <laughs> rules. We were like, what are the rules here? I what don't exists? understand. What is this town? And then, uh, so we're excited we to find out what that is. Um, Thank you guys so much for listening and keep it creepy. Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Dog. Kelly Nugent, Lindsay Katai, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, Dog. and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram, at Forever Dog Team, and liking our page on Facebook.